Okay, how you doing? Fine, man, just fine. Hey, dig it. We two timers, man. We gonna get out of here, boy. I'm gonna see you in the hospital. We gonna get a high, high. Yes, sir. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Taco Tuesday, and we decided to uh, get together here. Leo always has a lot to say. He always has a lot to say, and he. Sunday afternoon hour or two show is just not enough time for him to get in or for anybody else to get anything else in. So I don't know what this is that we're doing right here, but I got Leo Bridgewater in the house. Leo, how you doing today, man? I am good. And you know what, Mark? Because we don't know what this is, I feel like I should at least be afforded the opportunity to give my own kind of introduction too. like, hey, everybody, it's Leo Bridgewater coming to you. From the bird section of the dabbing cabin and the smoking heroes show here with my boy mark holmes what that's what this is <sighs> the dabbing cabin is it really the a dab cabin? In, that's right is it really a cabin is it like log? yes it is uh, yep a log cabin a log cabin yes it's okay. real all right well, yeah it's real the, so so do i need to bring a tent you know some marshmallows and you know, because I'm sure you're going to be having munchies and everything up in there, right? Some s'mores no, no. will be good, Mark, right? we have everything. We have everything. Is this okay. out? Hold it. Is this out in the middle of the woods? Yes. Actually, it is. Wait, yes. Hold it. Hold it. Stop. 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 Wait, 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 wait. So, you mean Jason could be out in the middle of the woods? Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. But you know don't us forget, black people. We Jason, all going to get killed first. Wait a minute, Mark. Just so that your your audience knows, don't get it twisted. Jason Voorhees is from New Jersey. Oh, damn. So, I mean, you tell me there's a cabin in the woods where Jason's from. Do I have that right? Well, no. Well, actually, you know, the diving cabin is actually in the woods, but it's not in the woods of New Jersey. Okay. Okay. All it's right. actually closer to you. Mm. So okay. I, I just, I'll just say that, you know. But right. the bird section is a, a, a part of the uh, Dabbing Cabin. So It's just a place I'm allowed to talk Eagles football. So uh, not not to really get into you know your, your business and everything and all that, mm -hmm. but was your de business developed before 2017? Yes. And was that because of the Eagles being so bad that you had to go ahead and just start... <laughs> I, I, this is why I don't trust your line of questioning because it always leads into man. something really messed up. You were inspired by the pain and you needed something to get over it. No. <laughs> <laughs> you are evil and must be destroyed. This is the problem that people have with Cowboys fans. This is how they get that reputation. It's stuff this like is this. You're not, you're... I'm just wondering what your motivation was. My motivation was I have Four friends who attempted suicide and three were successful. And I actually talked one off of suicide. Man. And so that was the thing that sort of kind of got me, that pushed me over the edge in terms of my advocacy. And mm -hmm. then through my advocacy for veterans and access is how the business revealed itself to me. And then I made that. It was like a basically a natural evolution. And then through that natural evolution is how I ended up at the Dabin cabin. And then... Mm -hmm. Talking smoking heroes with Eugene Monroe and so on and so forth is how the bird section came about because Eugene retired with the Baltimore Ravens. He's a NFL. He was an NFL football player. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan. He starts talking junk. I start talking junk. And then he was like, oh, man, you're really good. He heard me yelling at you uh, one day mm -hmm. um, while I was watching a football game with him. Because I had gotten to the point where I would have you on <laughs> oh, as boy. as the games are on. And you would say things and it would just piss me off. And I'd be like, oh, shut up, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> and they were right, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. You. And I would just be like, oh, shut up, Mark. Okay. I don't want to hear you, you know right what? now. I may actually have a, a business idea for you. Oh, boy. Okay. Here we go. It's another now, shot. Now, Let me hear now, it. I, I don't know much about you know weed. I mean, I, I have 
I hate to admit that, you know, I had back, okay. back in the days in college was forced to on a few occasions and things. And I won't Oh, so you have this. actually consumed at one point in life. Oh, Lord. I just remember somebody saying, if I don't hit that, that bong, I'm going to get my ass kicked. Okay. Oh, by, oh by, 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 a, by a very, very bad dude. I'm going to. I'm going to say, oh. I'm not saying names, <laughs> but when, when that person told you to do something, hey, pass, it. pass the mother upper. Okay. I'm not Sounds like say Charles that. Haley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> I will neither confirm nor deny that. Okay. That's that JMU stuff. Yeah, Mark, I'm, I'll be paying attention. Okay. Really? Um, I, I didn't say that. Okay. Well, FYI, Mark, are you aware I, I that the it. NCAA has taken cannabis off the list of, of, of banned substances? Oh, that's that's good. Yeah. But, but here's yep. my question. Okay, so there's all mm -hmm. these different bands uh, that, that you are making. Does the color mm -hmm. change with the different strands and things? You yes. Know, the color of yes. Everything? Yes. So, so is there any that, you know, it's kind of like I'm in the, the Shenandoah Valley, also known as the Blue Ridge Mountains. Is yep. there yep. any Ooh. strands out there that the color is a little bit more bluish? Strain, as in train, not strand, as in stand. Strain. Oh, yeah. See, that's how little yeah. I know. Okay. It's okay. That's what I'm here for. Okay. It's strain. So yes. is there some that has kind of a bluish tinge to the leaves? Yes, there are. Yes, there are. And so and, I figure you being an Eagle fan would say that you would come up with the cowboy strand for cowboy strain. Fans. Strain. Strain. <laughs> no, I would not. No, and I would, hey, hey, no. Hey, wait, 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 bro, bro. It's about the green, ain't it? The money. You can go ahead and get all, you can look. You, you, you got Joe Boo Sports right here. You know, and say, hey, here's some good Mark, stuff no. for you, Cowboys, because you're gonna be in pain, and I'm trying to help you. I'm just talking, about, just trying to run a business here. Mark, Mark, if I were if I were anywhere remotely tied into the creation of a strain associated with the Dallas Cowboys, that would be a curse on my family. Actually, bro, actually. How about you just come up with the NFL strains? Well, it, it, interestingly partner, enough, partner with the I, NFL, bro. Well, to be honest with you, <laughs> we're we're sort of kind of like without giving away too much. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We're in that. We're 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 actually in that lane right now. Okay, we're actually right, in that lane news. right now. I think the 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 good news is is the fact that. My partner, uh, Eugene Monroe, is one of the few African Americans uh, like myself who learned how to le do this business from the corporate level up. He's one of the original co-founders of uh, Green Thumb Industries and GTI. And mm -hmm. GTI became one of the first companies to be traded on the Canadian Stock Exchange that went public. So this, 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 my partner, this guy. You know what I'm saying? Knows this business on the corporate level inside out. And it's been, you know, it's been a, a, a hell of a a hell of a journey with him, you know, and also by way of his own personal uh struggles with, you know, the now that he's not playing, you know, dealing with the different injuries and all that stuff. So he's actually used this. It's more so medicine. And so we found out, he and I figured out by way of talking to each other that uh, uh, professional football players and and soldiers have a lot more to talk about than a flyover and a hug before a game. Because the, the CTE mm. and the PTSD, it was sort of kind of looking alike in terms of the way this stuff was playing out. You know what I'm saying? 22 right. veteran suicides a day. Remember what happened with um, uh, Junior Seau? Mm -hmm. That type of stuff was, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? These things were happening in real time. So um, it turns out Eugene started using cannabis while he was still an active player mm -hmm. to treat a lot of his injuries. And so by doing so, he became a subject matter expert, a cultivator himself. It's in his heart. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, by doing so over time, you know, a lot of other players started coming to him uh, seeking his expertise and seeing, you know, like uh, another person you might want to look at as an example is Megatron. 
you know, you can, Calvin you know, Johnson. Calvin Johnson. Yeah, he has a he has a great, you know, business himself. But if you actually talk to him, the dude is educated. Uh, another example would be yeah. uh, Al Harrington as well. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. him like these are all prof- former professional athletes who started consuming cannabis as a medicine first. And that's exactly what my approach to my own advocacy work was because cannabis was medicine. It's always it all, all all consumption is medicinal, whether people realize it or not. Okay. Yeah, well, we all subscribe you know, to that. I think you're probably about ten years or so younger than I am. I think. Yeah, I'm forty nine. Okay. Yes, yeah, so about ten years younger. You know, when I came up playing football and stuff, we didn't know anything mm-hmm. about concussions, okay? And the only yep. thing I knew about concussions was from Boy Scouts when we were doing first aid. They would say, if you're bleeding from the ears, then you have a concussion. And so oh, I never – savage. Know, well, no, I mean, literally, that's what they yeah. taught. Okay, if, the, if somebody's yeah. bleeding from the ears and got hit in the head, then they've got a concussion, which is a very severe concussion. Yep. But not knowing that, you know – in practice and games and stuff. You yeah, I remember one of our guys, our defensive, uh, a linebacker of ours. He's on the sidelines and he got hit in the head. He's like, I can't remember. I can't remember. I, and literally, five minutes later, he was back out on the field. You know, I remember yep. being in practice at JMU, uh, the first week of walking on, getting hit by a three hundred pound mm-hmm. tackle in the ear hole and being mm-hmm. launched and literally seeing the blue stars mm-hmm. with the coach mm-hmm. standing over me and saying, never, you know, stand up in the hole and then literally going back into practice. And so, you know, you wonder how much, and how long did you it. feel those effects? Oh, I, I think sometimes I still feel them because sometimes I'll get the migraines yeah. and stuff and I just need to be yeah. like in, in darkness and things. Yeah. The you light know? sensitivity. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it'll, it's yeah. like it comes and goes. Now that just may be, I'm just dumb or something like that. But then again, it nope. may be, you know, from the hits and things, you know, being uh, basically a wedge buster in college, you know, where you're running downfield 40 mile, 40 yards at a full sprint and running into a group of five mm-hmm. guys head first to try and stop mm-hmm. the wedge, you know, you mm-hmm. gotta think that something's going to get broken. And so we didn't know the things that we know now. And it's great that, uh, they're learning more and more and finding ways to, uh, deal with oh, scrambling. Mark, games. they're, they're doing stuff now, like on, like from the, from the veteran side of things, you know, the, the VA is passing those opioids out. Like it's candy. Mm-hmm. They mail it to us now, you know, uh, you're you're at 22 veteran suicides a day. Majority of those suicides are are Vietnam veterans. They're still doing. We got, we got more Vietnam veterans who came back here and committed suicide than who actually died in the war. And we passed that number years in the, ago. In the war. Yes, we had, we lost over 58,000 soldiers in Vietnam. Right. We. We're probably knocking somewhere around seventy something, eighty something thousand Vietnam veterans, who, which is why when you look at those traditional organizations like the VFW and the American mm-hmm. Legion, if you look at their leadership and whatnot, it's not really all that time appropriate, age appropriate. You know what I'm saying? Because the World War II veterans are all but gone. Yeah. And Mark, this year, this last month was the last time. The United States government is going to spend big money to go on D-Day there. celebrations because yeah. they don't expect. Yeah, they don't expect yeah. them to be there next year. They're they're like those 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 World War II veterans are hitting like ninety nine, a hundred years old. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they don't expect them to be there anymore. Um, the Vietnam veterans, the Korean War veterans, all but almost gone too. Mm-hmm. The Vietnam veterans, you know, they're they're doing themselves. So then you have. Uh, Desert Storm, and then you have Operation Iraqi Freedom, Mm -hmm. Operation Enduring Freedom. That's in Operation Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom. That's my generation of veteran, and we're not drinkers like that. We we actually consume cannabis more than we actually drink, and so there's this whole thing that needs. There's a lot of changing that needs to happen, and we're starting to see it as states legalize and come on board and then they start to realize the revenue that is happening mm-hmm. and whatnot and the 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 uh legal implications because you know it's played out on 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 some communities a lot harder harsher than others you know despite like when i say communities i'm talking about yeah. black and brown people versus white folks and we use it at the same rate 
It's that, well, that's what's let me crazy. ask you this because it seems like, yeah. uh, like I know DC a few years back was you know beginning to legalize and start to have mm-hmm. I think like ten weed growing commercial permits yep. that they were supposed to do and things like that. I remember that because um, I was doing work with a, a guy who owned a bunch of buildings and he was looking into trying to get into it. Um, have you found that it seems like because whenever there's this, to me this is like the wild west. Whenever mm-hmm. there's a new business and things that it ends up being that big companies try and come in and push out the little guys. Now, I have no idea how big you and your operation and stuff is, but are you facing something like that? Because when you get guys like, you know, the former Speaker of the House, John Boehner. Boehner, yep. Okay, who's, you know, I know he's big into weed. It still blows my mind, but that yep. he's big business into that industry and so on. Are you finding a lot of that going on? Yep. Uh, yes. Uh, the interesting thing is, is that, uh, not in a, not in what I am anticipating because I'm sure you've been keeping up with the news. You've been hearing about the president considering rescheduling cannabis to a schedule three instead of it being a schedule Mm -hmm. one, uh, drug by doing so by making it legal in that way or what have you, um, you're going to see the the pharmaceutical industry try hard to get into this. We we're, we're feeling it here in New Jersey with the alcohol industry. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand, Mark, when you talk about cannabis legalization, you're messing with three types of money. Okay. The first type of money you messing with is old money. That's the pharmaceutical industry. Mm -hmm. Okay. The second type of money you messing with is long money, which is the alcohol industry. Mm-hmm. And then the third type of money you messing with is big money. And that's the prison industrial complex, which in New Jersey has been thriving because we have the largest racial, uh, we have the largest racial disparity between of incarcerated citizens in the country, mm-hmm. you know, and we were averaging about 25,000 arrests a day for low level, nonviolent right minor possession of cannabis and 80 percent of those arrests were people who like me and you mark that's the that's the way it plays out you see what i'm saying so you know and and this is one of those things that's kind of crazy though and and mm -hmm. the thing is um going back to football with this is you know people like to think like say for example randy gregory randy gregory because he got caught during the combine literally got tested every week you know, people yeah. will go through an appointment and say, oh, man, he's not, you know, he does nothing but smoke weed. But my contention is he probably smoked less weed than the majority of the players. Because when you listen to Chris Long, former Eagle, yeah. he said, listen, you know, I smoked weed almost my whole career. He yeah. said, I knew come April, I'm going to be tested. You stop smoking yeah. that month. You get your test, you pass it, and you go back to go back smoking, smoking, smoking yeah. weed. And so you look at that and say, well, hey, I'm good now. I'm good for the next 10 months and stuff. Whereas Randy Gregory was getting busted every you know, time. You know, he might have only but, smoked three or four times in a year. The most, famous, the most famous example is Ricky Williams. Okay, oh, yeah, when he went on his sabbatical because he wanted to, yeah. Yeah, but see, here's the thing. Um, and, and, and understand something, Mark. Ricky Williams is a really good friend of mine. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Um, I love that dude. You know what I'm saying? Because now, we, you know, we we owe him a a a a debt of gratitude, a, a debt of gratitude that can't be you know paid back. To be honest with you, with what he sacrificed, because what Randy Gregory was doing, what everybody else has been doing, is medicating. Mm-hmm. I think what people. As people become more and more educated on cannabis and what it really is and all that stuff, you know, because we're fighting 50 years of prohibition and miseducation and misinformation. And so people don't realize that actually, number one, cannabis has a zero in the kill column. No one has ever died from consuming cannabis. Okay. Number two, when you talk about people such as yourself, Mm-hmm. You know, who suffered those, you know, like the, those those head traumas and everything like that. Cannabis is what's going to help you uh, help alleviate those symptoms and those pains. That's why those guys are doing it, especially when you're talking about the achy joints, the thing, because it's a car accident. Every play is a car accident, you know, yeah. on the body. It really and is. So, and what your body and my body and every single human has 
is a thing called the endocannabinoid system. And it's the most under maintenance system in the body. Your body naturally produces a lot of the chemicals and stuff, components to cannabis, but not, not like it, not as much as it used to. It's been taken out of your diet mm -hmm. over the over the decades. Oh, it's been get, removed. Don't, don't even get started talking about diet, man. They're killing Brother. us with, <laughs> with the food. Oh my god! You know, Brother, you know, listen. <laughs> you may <ain't> never lie. <laughs> the thing here's the thing is, you know, I'm I'm. There's so much deception, and I, I know I, I don't know what this whole conversation is. You know, I thought we were going to be bitch slapping eagles and everything else. We're gonna but, get there. We're gonna but, get there. Um. It's crazy because there's like a great dis, uh, deception that goes on. Uh -huh. I remember when I used to uh, manage this health, I mean, not health food store, um, a deli. We had these muffins called Tom's Muffins. And this is when the fat-free came through. And they kept telling you, oh, eat fat-free stuff. So we had these uh -huh. big-ass muffins that are like this that really were about 1,200 calories. But they were fat-free. And so people come in, oh, let me have one of those fat-free muffins. And you have the fat-free uh -huh. potato chips and everything else. And it was kind of like, yeah, it's fat-free, but it's still got a lot of sugar. And it's not yes. going to make you thinner. And in the same way, now you're seeing all this stuff that's 100% organic, right? And so I was sitting here because, <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. trying to do keto and everything else. you got to watch the carbs. And mm -hmm. so cauliflower is a big substitute for potatoes and starches. Yeah, right. And so yep. I was sitting here looking at this cauliflower pizza. I said, oh, my God, it's a cauliflower pizza. And then you start looking at it and reading the ingredients and everything else that's in there. It's like, this is not anything close to actually being cauliflower or being good. But the perception is in your mind, oh, this is good for you. It's healthy. It's not regular crust. It is, you know, cauliflower. It's plant-based. And there's so much processed yeah, oh, food yeah, they're in playing there the that game. just screws with your system mm -hmm. and so in the same sense when you were going through I, I remember making the argument for randy gregory smoking weed versus because he had uh, i know it's a paranoid schizophrenia but he has uh, bipolar okay uh -huh. and i remember looking at the side effects from smoking weed versus the side effects versus the medication that you were typically done from things like, you know, uh, heart racing and stroke and liver damage and all of these different things. You're going down the list of all the stuff that's here mm -hmm. to help keep you sane and so on. And then you look at weed and it's yeah, like, it's wait a minute. You don't see all these side effects that, you know, that it could literally lead to, you know, paranoia, schizophrenia and, you know, all of these different things where it just screws with the system. Mark, so, that's because... You got to realize that a lot, that's those the opioids, old money in there. Yes, the old money and the opioids are actually synthetic. Mm -hmm. They're not, you know, cannabis is natural to the body, whether people realize it or not. It's actually natural to the body okay. because of your endocannabinoid system. Uh, and, and hence why when you, when you did the comparison, why one has, you know, it's like when you listen to the commercials and mm -hmm. they tell you to take this, this medication and at the very end, they run down like if oh, all the different stuff. I'm like, yeah, that's and you're like, well, damn, worse, that that sounds like worse than what I got. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like damn. But then here's the other thing too: you take that medicine, then you have to take another pill to counteract the side effects of the pill that you just took. Mm -hmm. But then you may have to take another pill. So now you're on three medicines, and they're getting you see paid. What I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you see how it works, which is why. You know, like, I, I always had a problem with Joe Biden when he was running for president because whenever you said cannabis, the first word that flew out his mouth was rehab. So I already knew. I said, oh, he's going to try to give this to the pharmaceutical industry because what do old people like to do? They like to take pills. And do you know who the fastest growing demographic of new users in the cannabis space is? Old people. Old people. Yep. Yep. They, they're, they're hitting this like it ain't no joke. Hmm. Because it's you know, yeah, it's it's solving things for them. It's solving you know joint you know inflammation. It's anti-inflammatory. You know uh, some some of them you know uh, having a hard time with sleeping. They're going to get that sleep. You know the like you said the jitters and the shaking and all that stuff. Uh, even the quieting of the voices in their heads, like you, you know, like you said, you experienced. That's what voices. happens. 
I'm yeah, never, you know, I'm never it, lonely. Yeah, it calms the brain down. You know what I'm saying? I tell my son all the time, you know, it's really difficult being somebody who has the lights constantly on in your head. You know what I'm saying? Because you go to bed with this on your mind. You wake up with this oh, on your mind. And it's not that you're obsessing. It's just literally that much work. Here's what's crazy with me is, mm. you know, I'll go look at something and people will say, oh, you know, what, what can we do? And I'll say, I'll get back to you. And either I am driving, and I, this is, I think, one of the reasons why I love driving. And that's where I keep trying to convince my wife that we should have an RV and drive the country and everything else. I think you should too, Mark. I, I think you would you really know, like that. If I could find an RV sponsor, my dream would be is to literally go on the road for a whole season and follow the Cowboys everywhere. I think that that would be kind of cool. Like, I, 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 I actually can understand that. I, I could co-sign that. You know, yeah. it would be like the Madden Cruiser and just going boom, yeah. boom, yeah. boom, boom, wherever yeah. they're going to be and just hope that it's not too many snowy games where you got to go to Chicago in like late December or something. <laughs> I, I actually this. met the, the guy who used to drive that uh, John Madden's bus. Mm -hmm. I actually met his daughter I, when I was stationed in Italy. Her husband got stationed out there with us, and that's how we met. That's how we, I found out who the the driver of the Mad Bus was. Yeah, yeah. So I'll either come up with an idea while I'm on the road, or I'll mm. wake up in the middle of the night because I don't actually sleep through the night. I kind of go in, I'll sleep for a few hours, okay. and I'm awake for a couple I'll hours, and I'll that. sleep a bit more. But I'll wake up in the middle of the night, and it's like, oh, that's how I can do that. And then it's like I call the person, like, "Hey, hey, I've got the idea how we can fix this and stuff." Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's kind of one of those things that maybe that's 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 how that's how uh, my partner Eugene is. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He he sleeps for a few hours at a time, you know. But the I, you know me personally, it, it worries me. You know what I'm saying? It used to worry me, but then it took me a minute to figure out. Oh, that's just how it works for him. That's how yeah. his brain is because at the end of the day. He's literally a cornucopia of ideas, great ideas, things that he's figured out some things. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? He's come up with some other ways of doing things. He's come up with uh, a more efficient way of accomplishing something, you know, all kinds of stuff, you know. And this would be like, you know, three hours at a time, you know, two mm -hmm. hours at a time, maybe here and there. You know, my wife used to laugh at me because we'd be up at like three, four in the morning going over uh ideas and things to do with the business and everything like that you know especially during covid and so it was just it it just works out but i know people like i deal with people like you you know what i'm saying on a day-to-day -day, i know the symptoms i know what it all looks like okay i know what it sounds like when i see it when i hear it you talk just like him cowboy blue except for that part I'm telling you, know you bro, except for that part. Talk that's, to your part. Talk to your partner about that because the Cowboys yeah. are the biggest, you know, draw out there. <laughs> oh, did I you, say draw? That's a drag, isn't it? He, he would. He would <laughs> never. He would never go for that. He. You know what he just told me the other day? What's that? You want to know what he just told me the other day? What did he tell you? I said. I said. I said. Yo. Uh, I said. Hey, yo, Eugene. Um, we got to get tickets. We got to. We got to get uh, week thirteen tickets. Uh, so that, you know, because the Eagles are playing the Ravens, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, and he said to me, he said, oh, uh, it's already taken care of. Don't worry about it. And I said, all right, bet. You know, he said, but he said, the only problem is he said, low key, I, um, um, I, I, I really want this game and I'm not really feeling you. And to be honest with you, when I think about it, I get angry. And so, you know, it's best we just don't talk. So I was like, oh, so you, you, what? So you telling me I can't, you know, like I can't, I can't come to the house or whatever. And he was like, nah, you're just going to have to meet me in Baltimore. I was like, well, fuck it. Then I'll just go to my uncle's house and stay the night over there. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because he, remember, he retired as a Raven. So he's, a, his allegiance is to the Ravens. Yeah. And so he was starting to, he's, he, he knows that we're playing them in, in Baltimore and he's he's starting to get like he's getting amped up and so yeah. now so there might be a little bit of you know i got to get my my co-host for the bird section gb done me and him have to sit down and talk about this because i didn't realize that it was that deep for eugene but he's not feeling us at all and he told me he's been doing he's been going over stats he's been doing all kinds of research and everything mm -hmm. like that he is coming 
with, and I'm gonna have him on the bird section, Mark. Mm -hmm. But he is coming to spit some serious venom towards me and my bird section co-host GB Dunn. Like he is not playing, and he's he's a, he's a he can be a jerk. He can be a real he can he can be worse than you, Mark. You know, like you know, former players are horrible. What do you mean worse than me? You uh, you act like I'm a bad guy, Mark. Come I'm on, you nice make up guy. stuff. You make up stuff. You gotta you gotta drum up things. You gotta you know because again you know if 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 something and someone someone else just confirmed this for me earlier today because I told them I might be getting on with you. Oh, Lord. and 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 this guy, uh, you know, uh, shout out. You know what? Shout out to the president and CEO of the House of Kush, Reggie Harris, because he confirmed that if um, if if there's no drama in in Dallas, then something's wrong. Oh, well, I'm and, just waiting for this shoe to drop right now. Yeah, and and, and, and I said to today. and I said to him, I said, you know, I said, well, I might be getting on with Mark Holmes later on today, and I, he said, oh, okay. He said, yeah, it's something. He said, yeah, if 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 something was not right then if something was everything was peaceful then something would be off and i yeah. say yeah mark reminds me of, of of some relatives of mine who don't do peace and quiet very well you know what i'm saying like they gotta they gotta drop some sort of a life grenade you know what i'm saying like if, if 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 mark went into a home and the husband and wife were getting along and the kids were acting just right and and very you know very respectful and manning uh and, and had manners Mark would, you know, I, that's too, that's too, that's too nice. That's no, too quiet. That's not me. So let me, let me throw some life grenade no, in there. My man. sister does that. Oh, uh, no, you know that's not me at all, man. I like, I man, like, I like people. You're a Cowboys home. fan. You, it, it, that's oh, what I'm talking about. Lord, it, the see, metaphor. Um, you had to go there like that. Okay. Yeah. Cause mm -hmm. that's what y'all do. Y'all don't do peace and quiet very well. well. You know what? I tell Peace's. you one thing else we don't do. We don't be, eat, eat horse dung. Okay. We don't do the crazy stuff like that. Oh, you know about the Eagle fan if y'all won the Super Bowl. Eight horse horse crap. Yeah, I tell you, I know you saw that. Yes, but Mark. Okay. You've never with all the horses and all the cattle, you ain't never seen a cowboy fan eating some crap. Mark, they greased the light poles oh, in Philly. Boy. Yes, because y'all cray cray. Exactly. Okay. So, I, I, you know, you know, look, like, you know, at least in Dallas, they welcome your money coming into town to go to the palace in Dallas. You don't have to fear for your life very often in Dallas. I can't say the same for you Eagle fans. That is true. That is you know? true. And it is something that and that is something that we actually aspire to. The fact that what you don't understand is is your uncomfortableness is what we aspire to. That's right. We don't want you to be. We don't. We, we don't want you to 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 be comfortable. We don't want you to have a very good experience at the link. You know what I'm saying? I had a I, great time at AT and T Stadium. I had a ball. The Cowboys okay? must have lost then, huh? Yes, okay. I had a ball. You know what I'm saying? And the people were very nice and accommodating and all that. Things that I know we are not. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's part of the problem that you guys have. You're very accommodating. But okay. then again, at the same time, since, since you've opened you guys up have the door, to endure a lot. Since you've opened up the door on Cowboys versus Eagles, how, you, how do you feel? Okay, I know you like, you know, movement with your team and everything. Activity. Else. Yes. Activity, okay? You got a lot of activity that's been happening and all that. Do you think that all this activity is going to lead to a Super Bowl win? Yes, absolutely. You, think, you are, are you saying that you are a Super Bowl contender, i.e. favorite? We are, put like this, our window of opportunity is open for at least the next four to five years to win multiple Super Bowls. And what our if, window of opportunity, what if yes. this year ends up going down the toilet. What if you find out that Jalen Hurts was a one year wonder and Nick Sirianni is, you know, Dracula slash an idiot? Well I I would entertain that if there were if there were things about Jalen Hurts, if he had traits that would let me to think that that would be the case. You understand what I'm saying? You know, like when Carson Wentz all it took for Carson Wentz was to show just a little ounce or a little trace of bitch assness. And then it was like, okay, he got to go. 
he got to go because he's not going to last. You know what I'm saying? You know, look, you know, as soon as, as soon as they drafted Jalen Hurts, that's when that's when Carson started showing a bit of bitch assness. You know what I'm saying? Even though he was the man, you know what I'm saying? He had just he had that that solid deal. He was only a couple of years into his new deal that that made him the man. But as soon as they drafted Jalen and he started showing a little bit of bitch assness, it was like, okay, no, you gotta go. You can't play for us. Not here. That may fly in other in other uh, uh, um, in other markets, but not in Philly. These people are different. These people work hard. Like the whole fighting thing, that's real, bro. Mm-hmm. That is real. You know what I'm okay. saying? Now, I so, don't know no, how much I don't is really so. real in Dallas. How much is what? How much is really real? Because, see, I think um, Jerry Jones is like the modern day P.T. Barnum. I was just about to say, bring them Barnum and Bailey. Circus. There's a sucker born every minute. What did my man say that used to uh, play for y'all? Uh, uh, was it Schoolmaker? When he well, who was the who was the guy who was the who was the guy that went to Houston? I think, and he said that Dallas. He was like, you you could be working out and there are tours and people are looking at you through. Oh, that was Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz. Okay, well, yeah. Dalton Schultz. Well, yeah. I, I'll be. Yeah, that's true because you know everything is about the money. You know, if you go to the star, um, we were fortunate enough because um, you know. <laughs> I, I get a knock that I'm, I'm an idiot and I don't know anybody and stuff. But um, shout out to Uncle Philip because when we went down two years ago to um, help Stewart's family, this is, mm. of course, the tail end of COVID and everything else, and the star had been closed for tours. He hooked us all up. For everybody who was there working for us, he got a tour at the star, and this was literally the very first tours that started going on right mm-hmm. then and there. And when we were there, so as you go through the star, it's it's incredible. It's like literally going to the circus. You know, you're seeing all the trophies. You're seeing the draft room. Uh, you're seeing the dining hall and finding out that the Cowboys players literally have part in their contract where they're actually paying for food there, whether they eat there or not. And you see the glass. That's messed up, right? <laughs> you, you, see the, you see the glass to the, to the weight room and all that. But I will say that I remember – being in New York at their training facilities and them having glass windows into their weight room as you're going to the field to work out where you can see them working out too. So I'm not going to say that that's solely a Dallas Cowboy thing, but I do know at the Star, they have the rehab facility at some point, you could actually work out and rehab there yourself with NFL players for a certain price, of course. Right. And also, mind you, they also have facilities there for state high school championship yeah. games. You know, so there's the, the the star is a lot more welcoming to the people as a whole, as a as an attraction. To the community and all. There's, yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That ain't happening in Philly. No, I've been to no. the Nova Care Center. Believe it or not. Right. Joe Boo has but, been Joe Boo has been in the Nova Care Center. And and you make sure you keep Joe Boo's uh, little crazy looking ass up out of there too, that damn voodoo doll. I don't. I, I I yeah no, no. And you keep him. You keep his ass away from me too. What? I don't like that thing. I don't. I don't like. I don't do. I don't do that, Mark. I don't Joe, do that. Joe Boo. He's a nice guy. Joe man. Boo. Joe Boo might as well be a clown, cause I don't do clowns either. Like I'm like nope 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 nope. I don't play with those things. Nope. Hell no. You okay. Do no I tell you what. Me. I you know what. I will make an exception for you, okay? Since we are sitting oh, here, we are breaking bread and everything else. You know, I'm here with the enemy and all that, okay? I know you said you got a whole jar for me, and I'm like, bro, I don't indulge. Mm-hmm. But I tell you what, I will indulge one time with you. If Joe Boo can come? If Joe Boo is sitting in between us. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh. Wow. Oh shit. I'm, I'm, all right. So in my what? mind right now, Jobu. I am trying to think of. Jobu's got his own ashtray. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I I am trying to think of a strain oh, that I shit. could consume that would make me not mind Jobu sitting there between us. He grows on you, bro. I'm telling you. 
he grows on you. Chicks dig him too. I bet you know what? That's the other thing too. I just think I I I think all y'all a little cray. I think oh, all y'all a little cray cray. I really do. I think people who be like, oh Joe Field, nah, uh uh-uh. uh, hell no. You know what I'm saying? And you know what's even crazier to me is that you are really proud of Joe Boo. Bro, you, you know are proud you know, when you walk around them. Hold on, you hold know on. What I'm let, 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 let me say this, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say my life is crazy, and sometimes things happen that just can't be happenstance, okay? Because, right. see, originally, it's an Eagle fan is the reason why Joe Boo exists here. No way. Seriously. Joe Boo is our fault? It's actually an Eagle fans, okay? Because I was in a Facebook group, NFC East, trash talking, and um, I can't remember his name. I know he lives in Florida. If I go back, in the, the, I can find it. Uh, mm-hmm. Carmichael, I think, is his last name. But the Super Bowl was in Dallas, okay? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I had, mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember what my theme was that year. The next year was going to be in New Orleans, and we were in New Orleans for a photo shoot. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, since the Super Bowl is going to be in New Orleans, then we need to have a voodoo theme. So I went to Marie LeBeau, who was the voodoo princess's shop, and bought a couple of little voodoo trinkets and things. And so I went to FedEx Field, and I had this little, you know, voodoo flat handmade piece at FedEx field. And I took pictures and I posted it in that group. And, um, the guy said, man, the Cowboys suck so bad that not even Joe boo could help him. So I was like, okay. So I carved Joe boo's head and I actually made a straw, straw body and started taking it around. So I went up to Philadelphia and I put him outside the stadium, took pictures there with the New York giants and stuff. And it was born. People would see me. And they'd say, well, actually, one or two things would happen. They would see me and say, this guy is crazy, go the other direction. Or they would come up and say, what are you doing? And I said, well, this is Cowboy Joe Boo, and he's here to spread some mojo for the Cowboys. And now that you've asked, you're part of the story. And I would take their picture, and I'd post it on Facebook. If you actually go to uh, Cowboy Joe Boo on Facebook, wow. you will literally see thousands of pictures of Joe Boo. Uh-huh. With with different people from so if that guy had never said anything, Joe Boo wouldn't exist. Damn, we can be our own worst. Our own but worst seriously, enemy. it's kind of crazy because I mean, with the NFL commissioner, uh, you know, uh, right, hanging right. drywall and everything else on the top of Camelback Mountain, he's been to Pro Bowl. You know, it, whenever Calais Campbell sees me, the first thing he says is, "Where's Joe Boo?" Okay. Um, Literally. Yeah, I noticed that you that players do reckon like yeah. they know who he is. Yeah, so, yeah, I, it's, it's I know crazy. There's, I know there's somebody that don't like him either. There's a there's a Cowboys fan. Well, that, Nate Cowboys Newton was scared to death of him. him. He's like, no Nate man. Yeah, well, actually, it. Dak Prescott when he first saw him was like, yo man, I'm from Louisiana. We don't play with voodoo. But after that first year and you know yep. things, he yeah, yeah, definitely. Come on, yep. man. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And, and yep. for me, it's kind of crazy because. Crazy things happened. For example, we were in Houston for the Super Bowl, right? Mm -hmm. And I wanted to get up early to go get on first take because Dak Prescott was going to be there, right? And we had an event we had to do the night before, and so it was too late when I got up. And by the time I got up and got there, the line to get into first take was literally like four blocks long. And so I'm standing out in front of the venue looking at all these people. And it's like, there's no chance of getting inside this little teeny place with, you know, 4,000 right. people in line. And one of the guys who recognized me is like, hey, Mark, man, you know, I watch your channel and stuff. And so I'm out there with Joe Boo and everything else. And one of the ESPN dudes says, you know, it's all about Joe Boo and stuff. And it's like, oh, he knows. Who it. Well, it was kind of cool. The next thing I know is a producer comes over, grabs us and some other people that were out there. They take us around the side, and we're now in the intro for the show. I got Stephen A. Smith literally 10 feet from me with Molly and uh, the the guy that used to do boxing and stuff, the uh, the white guy. I can't remember him. Oh, uh, um, uh, not Nick Wright. Yeah, Nick Wright. No, not Nick Wright. No, 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 no. The oh, other oh guy. no. Uh, he was trying to be a rapper. Max Keller. Max Keller. Ma- Max right. Keller. So, yeah. yeah. So they're all like 10 feet in front of me. The camera's right there. And when they're done... Stephen A. Smith is coming through, and he's high-fiving everybody, and I've got Joe Boo up, and I said, Stephen A., and he goes to high-five me. He hits Joe Boo, and Joe Boo goes flying. (laughs) True story. 
So for a while there, I was saying Stephen A. Smith assaults Joe Boo and we're posting videos and stuff on it. And it's like, how the hell did that happen? So Joe Boo has actually opened doors for you, to be honest. How did that you. happen? Yeah. You know, we were at the NFL yeah. commissioner's party, you know, with Stephen A. Smith always saying, you know, I hate the Cowboys and everything else. Yeah. And we're here and we're looking at Stephen A. Smith hugging all over Stephen Jones to the point where I'm like, get a room. And, you know, we videotaped it. And after putting that video out, it was like, oh, I, I got nothing but love for the Joneses. It's just some fans. I hate. It's like, yeah, we exposed your ass. Mm-hmm. And I don't mm-hmm. know how those things happen. Okay. I honestly don't where strange things have happened around Joe Boo. So, so I, I have a question for that. you. I, I have a question for mm-hmm. you. So what is it like, you know, like oh, shit. what is it like when you go through the whole, pretty much the whole season with Stephen A. Smith saying the things that he says, and then it's like you guys actually prove him right. Like what is what is that? You know like? what? As he even says, the uh, a broken clock is right twice a day. Twice a day, yeah. Okay, let's be clear here. You more than anybody else should know how hard it is to win the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. This is number fifty nine. In all of those fifty eight years. You've won one. And I'm not trying to say that mm-hmm. to disrespect I know. You're not you. taking a shot. Okay. I know what you're making there are me. 31 teams that aren't going to win the Super Bowl this year. Mm-hmm. So that means there's a 1 in 32 chance. Okay? So that's a 3% chance of winning the Super Bowl. You can say, oh, well, the Cowboys are going to choke. They're going to lose. Okay, well, only one team's not going to. You're playing the odds. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. The fact that Stephen A. Smith says you're going to choke doesn't hurt any more than me seeing my team lose in the playoffs. It's still going to hurt one way or the other. It doesn't matter what. So, I don't let him so trick you, my emotions. Okay, so you so basically, would it be fair? Would it be a fair assessment to say at this point, uh, Cowboys fans are just numb to it all? I think this year, more than any other year, I will actually say more of them are checked out. More people have finally said enough. Is I would, uh, I, I would but agree see, here's with that. The, here's the thing that happens, and, and, and I'm going to tell you it's happening right now as mm. we speak. The Cowboys, of course, drive the needle for the media. And what happens is the Cowboys get scrutinized more than anybody else. Because if Justin Herbert were Dak Prescott, they would be killing him right now. Because he got paid. His numbers yeah. have been going downhill since his sophomore ye- season. Right, they would be yeah. saying that you were a one hit, one year wonder. Nobody's looking mm-hmm. the fact that he had twenty interceptions. I mean, excuse me, twenty TDs and like eleven interceptions, and um, his team literally went down the toilet. Mm-hmm. And nobody's looking at the fact that you had a twenty-seven point lead in the playoffs, where yeah. you got four takeaways and somehow you only scored three more points the rest of the game and lost. Yeah, if that was Dak Prescott, yeah. man, they'd yeah. be talking. So things happen. To other teams like they do the Cowboys, but they're not talked about in the same way. And I look at it from this standpoint. Maybe I'm crazy, but everybody, you know, Wade will tell you it's only about the playoffs. Well, bro, I remember those three years where I was five and eleven in a row. I remember mm-hmm. the eight and eight, eight and eight. That was when Bill Parcells came and took over, right? Right. He Bill Parcells came and got got his playoffs two or four years. I'll at least enjoy seeing twelve wins. Yeah. As opposed to being like, say, you know, the Jets right now or the Bears. Right. You right. know? Okay. So it's more so because like because uh, I've often said, you know, and I, I've said this to you before, you know, if you guys it, 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 it does feel like you guys are more concerned with the regular season wins and record than you are. about not, the No, 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 no. I want to win in the postseason. But see, you know, as I sit here and look at, oh, I was saying that. Everything's evolving because now all of a sudden you're hearing yeah. that the Cowboys are actually a good team. After literally saying the Cowboys suck and they should trade this guy and get rid of this guy and they need to bring in this guy, now you're seeing everybody going through, you know, seeing that, you know, Dallas Cowboys, that uh, the ceiling is a lot higher than you think. 
um, you know, for the Cowboys. Are, are the Cowboys right? better than the Eagles this year? Well, I'm Honestly, listening to, just, listening I'm, to Dan. I'm trying to start. Just listening to Dan yesterday. He, they went through, and they're you know player for player, pound for pound, right. our defense versus your defense, and it's like Cowboys got a better defense. Now, of course, they're they're saying you know Dak Prescott better quarterback than Jalen Hurts. And so I'm kind of like now you're hearing everybody putting these expectations on the Cowboys. But if you said the Cowboys, and this is where I keep trying to tell people, if you said the Cowboys suck in the offseason and they didn't do anything to change it, how is it that all of a sudden that we are Super Bowl contender? How is it? Because every single year we get told you don't care about winning, you don't. Jerry Jones doesn't bring any free agents. You end up deconstructing the team by letting good players go and believing in your own guys. And going into the season, nobody says you're a great team. That you're one of the best rosters in football. But somehow, once the season starts, oh, Cowboys, Super Bowl aspirations and stuff. And now you're chokers. How can you be a choker if you weren't expected mm-hmm. to do anything? Mm-hmm. You know, if you're the Eagles, you say, oh, well, we brought in Barkley. That raises the bar, right? You know, we traded for A.J. Brown. We're bringing in talent. It should be the expectations for you guys because you've done so much yes. should be yes. there. For the Cowboys, yes. you know, the commanders are doing more in the offseason. How, how is it that you guys didn't do that, but you got the same lofty same expectations that we got? Exactly. Yeah. How can yeah. we have the yeah. same expectations? I, that I we think that, have? too. Like I'm, I'm, and, and I'll tell you this much, too, Mark. It's the reason why uh, you're starting to see uh, a migration from uh, uh, from traditional mass media to so to social media and YouTubers and and content creators. Well, I'm that's part because the they're because though. they're giving it to you. You know, uh, they're they're not trying to create a narrative. They're not subscribing to a narrative. They're telling you what they really think. I I, yeah. I I often find myself when I'm on your channel on on Sundays and I'm and I really do just be listening and I say to myself, okay, so they're not they're, they're not entirely screwed up in the head because they say like the way you guys complain about your team is exactly the same things that I say about your team. Mm-hmm. So it's not it's not that you it's not that we don't uh, agree, we don't disagree on what's wrong with your team. It's when the narrative gets pushed that this is somehow a Super Bowl team. Well, see, here's or the that, thing. But and I, how can you be a Super Bowl team if you weren't good enough to do it last year and you let players right. go, and now all of a sudden you let these players go, now you're a Super Bowl team? Yeah, where, where did that come from? On, yeah. You know, r- rookies to start and fill the holes or, uh, you know, um, UFL players to, to be starters? How is right. that? Comparable to you guys bringing in Barkley. That's the thing I keep trying to say to me. That's people. what I would, yeah. And, this, I, I, this that's, where, and that's and, what, that is what be, has always been my argument, Mark. Like, when I say, like, I'm like, hey, I, I like activity. You, you, you ask the question all the time. What happened at the end of the year, Leo? What happened? You guys I, went six and one. You always bring that up. And yeah, I always say, because Mark, the it's expectations not like this. should be there because Absolutely. you guys were there in the Super Bowl. And I don't, I don't, you still I don't have the best that. offensive line rating. You go yep. out and bring in all these talent and stuff. Yep. You know, we're merry sisters of the poor here in comparison to you being the guys that got all the pieces. Yep. And the fact yep. that, and this is where I get pissed off at Cowboy fans that say, "Oh, well, just get rid of Dak, man, because he's a garbage ass quarterback." It's like, wait a minute, you don't seem to understand. How hard it is to find a quarterback. Yep. In the same that is sense, true. they say, oh, well, yep. just get rid of CD. That is true. And it's like, you know, Micah Parsons, he doesn't want to play two positions. Who else gets asked to play two positions? Yeah. Well, he's just a one trick pony. You know what? If I can get a guy who's one of the best at a trick, I'm okay with that. I'm just going to yep. have him do that one trick. I'll get yep. the other guys to do the other things because you get Steven Jones. His big thing is we want position flex. Fuck that. Right. Okay? It's kind of like this with the Cowboys. <laughs> and, and the thing is, what well, you're talking about now, how YouTube is growing and stuff, and it's kind of the wild, wild west. First mm. thing is, you've got traditional media guys that are coming to YouTube 
that have an arrogance of I've been yeah. doing this forever. Yeah. Yeah. Off I've their got name, a their reputation, degree yep. and things. Yeah. You YouTubers yeah. step aside. The professionals are here. A lot of them really don't like going to YouTube because it's like, oh, it's kind of a step. What is YouTube? Oh, wait a minute. I, I, I was Sports Illustrated. I was the 5 o'clock news. Uh-oh. Wait a minute, Mark. You can still hear me, right? I can still hear you. I'm okay. looking at this car full of flowers. Oh, that's... <laughs> and high time. Hi, Cameron. Okay. Hold on, but, Mark. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's no problem, man. Your camera's like, I'm bored with you guys. Man. I'm yeah. taking a nap. <laughs> it, my camera timed out on me. But... Oh, good. When you get a lot of the talking heads, the thing is, is... They are used to being like a general practitioner where they treat the whole body. You know, they know a little bit about everything. Right. But when you have a real problem, you, you know, when you tore your ACL, you don't go to your regular general practitioner. You go to a, a specialist. You see an orthopedist, okay, a guy who knows about ligaments and things, right? Well, that's kind of like what you have with YouTubers now is they specialize in your team. Because I sit here and I listen to yeah. some of these things yeah. from guys. So I, I got a clip earlier today where this guy said, well, the Cowboys look like they're going to just ride with Dak Prescott's contract the way it is and so on. And it said, you know, and not tag him next year. It's like, you don't know that you can't tag him? He's got a no trade clause because I constantly hear people. Well, the Cowboys should entertain trading Ke Dak Prescott. I, and I, I, like, I say the same thing. It's like, wait a minute, aren't you supposed to be the know-it-all that knows everything about it? You you understand he has a no trade clause, right? You understand that you can't tag him because he has all the leverage. How are you supposed to be the big guys yeah. that have all the information and you don't have the basics right? And well, the they, thing they, is, it's, it's too not hard. That they're leading. They're leading a. The, it's a dialogue. That they're trying to control. Yeah. And they're banking on the fact that a lot of people aren't paying attention or don't know that much about the the, the actual individual contracts. You know, mm -hmm. they're 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 banking on you being dumb. And the thing is, is that that's where the mistake is coming into play because there are a lot more people who are are who are fully committed, who are who are who are emotionally invested mm -hmm. enough that they actually took a look at contracts. It was the same thing that I was saying when it came to the James Bradbury issue. Yeah, you know, it was like, have you actually looked at his contract? Do you know how much of a dead salary cap hit we would take if we just cut him? You know what I'm saying? It's not worth it. You know, but then when you take a look at it, it's like, okay. You know, hey, this dude was an all pro the year before. You see what I'm saying? When we had CJ Gardner Johnson behind him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When we had uh when we when we had a a, a a a hellacious pass rush. You see what I'm saying? So if you don't know how the actual contracts go, you know what I'm saying, then you know look, if if AJ is such a problem, how did he end up get paid twice? Right. You, you, you see what I'm saying? He got paid twice. Well, so that tells me. And then when I hear everybody talk about Nick Sirianni, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but then when I listen to the players talk about Nick Sirianni, it doesn't match. Nothing matches. It hardly ever matches for me when I listen to the way people talk about, you know, uh, what's actually what's happening on the team versus what I hear them say themselves. And I get a different feel for it, which is why the other day I kept saying, Mark, Lane Johnson spoke on things, and I'm good. You, well, you, you see what I'm saying? What it was like, all right. Okay. Once, once he, once so he, once Lane said, so let, let me be clear. So you're headed for the Super Bowl. He didn't say that. But, yes, I will say I, we're headed for the Super Bowl. I'll put myself out there. I don't care. I will do that every year, especially when I think that we actually have a very real shot. And – the point that I was making before was you're always asking what happened, one and six, what happened? And you ask it as if there was never an answer that was actually offered, one that was offered and one, two, one that you could actually wrap your brain around. It, you know what I'm saying? Whether or not it's the right answer is a different mm -hmm. story, but the fact of the matter is is that you, you do have an answer for what happened. And you also okay. saw how that... how how it was actually addressed 
They didn't, we didn't disappear it or anything like that. They identified it as they saw it, you know what I'm saying? And and actually uh, directly addressed it as again. they saw fit. Okay. I, I don't, what I don't understand is, is that what is like, what would have been a better, like, what is the most ideal answer to that question in your mind? When you ask me what happened to what, you know, you guys went one and six. What 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 is your opinion? What do you think happened? What I think happened? And, how, and yeah, shit what do you think happened? Shit finally caught up to him. You know, uh, you, you shit just finally caught up to him. That you know the the arrogant. Like here here's what I'm gonna actually say. After the first year of Jalen Hurts playing defense, excuse me, actually not first. The the good year that Jalen Hurts had, the defensive coordinators. Because I remember saying. So many times that Jalen Hurts, it was literally like the parting of the Red Sea in the middle. Mm-hmm. And he would just get, okay. I said, defensive coordinators are going to go through. They're going to analyze this stuff and get his tendencies. I remember you saying that. And I said, what you will see is you'll still see Jalen Hurts running, but I guarantee you won't see him as effective in the middle of the field. That right. they will understand you got to stay home and make him run at least around the outside. Right. And that's one of the things that happened along with, of course, him getting hurt, even though they never said he actually got hurt. The right. change in, in offensive philosophies with new coordinators, the defense wasn't as good, and they kind of got exposed. Now, the question is, is can he reinvent himself and get back to where he was? I don't know. I don't think he's going to. That's just my personal opinion. Now, let me ask you something. What variables are you using to say that you don't think he will? I'm just looking at it because you're ch- the, the, if, if he was in the same offense again, you know, where you're going to get better because of repetition. Because football has changed. Back in our days, we had six weeks of training camp and two-a-days. You had time to get muscle memory to go ahead and learn these things. There's a maximum of 14 padded practices. And padded practices, they're not even at full go anymore. Mm -hmm. The first time you're actually full go really doing anything is week Mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Unless you're playing preseason, but starters don't play in preseason anymore. And so if you're now saying we're doing a different offense, different play mm-hmm. calling, because the speed is different from practice to a game, to me it's like you are a race car driver and you're practicing during the week at 55 miles an hour, and come Sunday you now got to drive 200. It's not the same driving 55. Right, right. And that's what it's like playing a football game. I get it. We, we know because of like your business and everything else that you're doing. We know about head trauma and everything else, about literally right. scrambling your brains. And we're trying to do better now that we know better. But the reality is, is the sport is not the same. And that's why you see some teams start out in September that play really, really good because they're familiar with their system. Maybe they didn't have a change of a lot of different players. They're familiar mm-hmm. And then you see other teams oh, that start man. taking off in October because now we finally got some time in here. We're starting to really get into our groove. And you actually have a better team than those teams that might have started out 3-4-0. and four and oh. They were just good now, and they've maximized it because they're familiar with the system. Did I lose you completely there? No. Oh, no bird no. sex. Oh, man. Get, get that shit off my screen. No. <laughs> Hey man, leave, 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 listen. You know what I'm saying? Leave, leave. No. Here, let me wipe the screen with the the Eagles toilet tissue. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> but bro, we have been going on here for you know over, you like it for over an hour. Okay, I don't know that I can have enough recording space for this shit. But you gonna have to edit the hell out of this. No, I'm no. It's going yeah. up raw. Do it raw. Really? <laughs> okay. I'm just putting really. The whole they're going to see thing. us get along, and we hardly said we really didn't say a whole lot of Eagles. F the Eagles, stuff. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, F, F the, the Eagles. Cowboys. I told you when we started. I don't know what this is. <laughs> I would put in the title "Getting High with Leo," but I figure it'll get demonetized by YouTube because they won't. The sponsors won't like that title. <laughs> but well, the the here's the thing: pass the duchy from is, the left with Leo. <laughs> Mark, I'm not. What I'm not is I. I, I am. I, I am able to receive. I'm in. A, first of all, this isn't the normal cowboy safe space, so I don't actually have to adhere to those rules that I normally would when I'm in your cable in, in your cowboy safe space with Troy and Wade and 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 Edwin and Thomas and 
you know what I'm saying, angry, loyal, you know, all those guys, you know what I'm saying? I think that Derek J, you know, I you know, Game Time, that's my man, you know, like I I I like those dudes, you know what I'm saying? But even though they give you a hard way to go. Right, you know what I'm saying? They remind me of the guys in my VFW post because I'm the youngest in my VFW post, Mark. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, although they all support me in everything that I do, and they are very proud of me, nothing that I do doesn't come with some sort of snaps or cracks or something like that. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. they, they're they going to give me a hard time because I'm the youngin'. You see what I'm saying? And I think all those guys that's, that, that are regulars, you know, even Asia, you know what I'm saying? I think all of them who are regulars on the channel, I think, uh, you know, I think they're great folks. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But they're never going to uh, not give me a hard time. Something would be wrong if they didn't. You see what I'm saying? And oh, I yeah. appreciate that. But I'm not fighting them today. It's just you. You know what I'm saying? Why we and fight? it's, uh oh, your mic, your mic is out. Uh, why we got to fight? Here you go. Why we got to fight, man? Welcome to fight. I said, why we got to fight? Exactly. I, I, I'd like to have a admirable intellectual conversation about our two teams because I do think that, you know, first of all, I don't think that you guys are a Super Bowl caliber team. Uh, did especially I say when we I look at the, Did I say that one? No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying like, I'm saying it like almost like in agreement with you in terms of how do you get these Super Bowl expectations when you haven't done anything that looks Super Bowl like, you, you see what I'm saying, in terms of activity. Because I'm like, how are you guys put in the same category as us and y'all didn't do nearly half the things? Oh, that because we did. Dak Prescott's your daddy. There you go. There you go. See, and that's, you know, and then you have to say it like that too. Uh, I'm, you know, am I Mark, wrong? Like, Mark, how we're do you not explain that? that? That is true. That is true. You know what I'm saying? Dak has had his way with our team. You know what I'm saying? But. It doesn't translate well into postseason activity. It's like the same thing when the cow when the when the Giants won the Super Bowl. We oh, swept well, them. That you know year. what? If the Cowboys were to play the it's Eagles moved. in the playoffs, man, we go to Super Bowl every it's year. Moved. Like like when you talk about how many times fuck them birds, we, fly Eagles, fly. Now nah, yeah. we shoot those birds out of the sky. Stupid oh, dumbasses managed to give up a third and thirty to my sexy arm. Pathetic defense and team. No wonder I own those piece of shit frauds every damn year. Don't get me started on the fans. You boo me while I earned a respected award. Losing the Super Bowl was just karma for you fuckheads. I can't wait to drop 100 on your heads next season.